Active Directory, there are several types of replication. The first type of replication is intra-site replication, which occurs inside one site between the domain controllers in that site. Active Directory automatically connects all the domain controllers to form a ring. Each of the domain controllers has two incoming connections and two outgoing connections. This is to ensure that there is some degree of redundancy if a domain controller were to become unavailable. Intrasite replication happens every 15 seconds after a change is made in the Active Directory database. If there are more than three hops between domain controllers in one site, then more connections will be made between the domain controllers until the hop count is less than three between all domain controllers. This ensures that a change will reach all domain controllers in one site in less than a minute. The next type of replication is inter-site replication, which is replication that happens between different sites in Active Directory. These connections are not made automatically and need to be set up by the administrator. In each site, a domain controller is selected to replicate changes from that site to another site. This domain controller is termed a bridgehead server and it is selected automatically. However, it can also be manually added by the administrator. However, if you manually select a bridgehead server and all of the bridgehead servers are down, replication will not occur from that site. Site links are created by the administrator to link sites together. Site links support two different transport protocols. These are RPC over IP and SMTP. SMTP does not support file replication and on most networks only RPC over IP will be used. The Knowledge Consistency Checker or KCC is responsible for creating the connections between the domain controllers inside a site and between sites. It does this with the information contained in the Active Directory database. In this demonstration of replication between domain controllers, these two domain controllers are located within the same site. We would go to Tools, and there are many objects. Any object in Active Directory can and will be replicated between domain controllers. But for this demonstration, I'm going to take a look at users and computers. I'm going to add and delete users or a user and we're going to check out the replication on the other domain controller. So right now we're in DC uh, 68 here and opening up Active Directory users and computers we can see I have some uh, containers here some groups and computers and users. So if I were to add a user to, let's say, the IT department, I can right click here in the blank space and I can add new and I want to add a user. So let's say I want to add Oliver Queen. And let's give him a logon name as Arrow. And we click Next. And we're going to give him a temporary password. It's always a good idea that he's going to have to change when he logs in. And it looks like it's taken it. We'll see if it will. Click Finish. And there we go. We have Oliver Queen here. Now we should be able to jump over to our other domain controller, which also holds a copy of the Active Directory database. And again, we can go into 
Active Directory Users and Computers, and we expand this out, and they were under ABC Company, and they were in the IT department. And sure enough, there's Oliver Queen replicated over here. So the other thing we can do, let's say for whatever reason Oliver Queen is no longer here and we want to delete his account, we can do this with any object in App Active Directory. We can say delete. So if we go back over here and we refresh this, We can see even though we created that object, that user object, on this domain controller, we were able to delete it on the other domain controller. In any environment, we need to ensure that the time and date on our computers are set accurately. If the time drifts too far from the correct time, this can cause problems logging into the network and cause time sensitive authentication systems to fail. Computers have a battery on the motherboard that is responsible in ensuring that the clock always has power even when the computer is not plugged in. The internal clock, however, can gain or lose time. If the clock gets too far out of sync with the correct time, as I mentioned, this can cause authentication errors. Authentication systems such as Kerberos use tickets that are generated using the time and date. Big differences in these times will mean that new tickets that were just created could be perceived as a replay attack by the Kerberos authentication protocol. If the timestamp in the authenticator isn't within five minutes of the time server, it will reject the packet. These five minutes are referred to as the Kerberos time skew. And in rejecting the packet, that will cause logon issues for our users. Computers in a Windows domain use a hierarchy approach to ensure that all the times for the computers in the domain are up to date. The root of the hierarchy is the domain controller which holds the PDC operational master role. Not only should this domain controller have a reliable clock installed, it should also be synced off of an external time source. This ensures that all the computers that sync their time from the PDC emulator will have the correct time. Below the PDC emulator in the time hierarchy are all the domain controllers. The domain controllers are responsible for making sure all other computers on the network have the correct time, including clients and other servers in the domain, such as the member servers. In a network with multiple domains, the child domains should sync their time from the parent domain. The domain controller holding the PDC emulator operational master role in each child domain should be configured to sync their time from the closest domain controller in the parent domain. Syncing the time from an external time source is imperative in order to keep the time current and on the PDC emulator. These external time sources are grouped together to form a hierarchy also. Each level of the hierarchy is called a stratum. At the top of the hierarchy is stratum zero, which is a very accurate physical clock. Usually these are either atomic clocks, GPS, or radio clocks. In order to access the time from these hardware clocks, these clocks are directly connected to stratum one clocks. Stratum one clocks may be configured for private access only to decrease the load on them. At the next level is stratum two. These clocks sync their time directly from stratum one and are generally publicly accessible. It is generally considered better to sync from one of these time clocks rather than a stratum one as there are more stratum two external time clocks. The 
first order of business to sync to an external time source is to locate an external time source. Network time protocol is the suggested site from Microsoft and I'm here at the site so we need to find a time server and we want to use stratum 2 time servers that's the best practice stratum 1 are uh, becoming overloaded so we'll click on stratum 2 and the trick is is to find a time server close to your location so I'm in Michigan so I'm going to scroll down to the USA and we see we've got US and USMI. So we want to make sure you pick one that has open access. Uh, restricted access is not going to work. So I'm going to use this Detroit, Michigan one. I'm going to click on that. And it's going to bring up the information about the time server. The information that we need is right here. We need the uh, host name IP address, not the uh, actual dotted decimal IP address. And we're going to use that information here in just a minute. So here we are on one of our domain controllers. The first order of business is to ensure that we are in fact on the server that holds the PDC emulator role. And if I right click on the Windows button, I can go up here to System. This is one of many ways to find the name of this computer. And this computer is DC2 Knoxville. So from PowerShell, running as administrator, I mentioned in an earlier vi video of how to find who holds the various roles. There is another way that I'm going to demonstrate here type netdom query backslash domain colon and then the name of our domain for me it's ncmish.fm and we type fismo gives us a nice little list of who holds which roles so we want to see who holds the PDC role and it is in fact DC2 Knoxville which is the machine that we're on so we're good there in order to configure this server to sync its time with an external time server we enter the command w32 tm slash config slash manual peer list in order to tell it where to look and this is where we need the information from the uh, NTP website so we're going to enter NTP dot I S H I K A W dot sne.jp. Now remember you want to use the server that is closest to your physical location and we want to say sync from flags so we set that to manual and we want to tell Windows that this is in fact a reliable time source so we say reliable yes and in order to update the time immediately we're going to do a slash update and we're going to press enter and we see that the command says it was completed successfully the way that we can tell whether or not it was not completed successfully is we could go into our uh, event logs and see if there are any time syncing errors but it's really a, a pretty straightforward uh, process to set up an external time server. Thanks for watching this video and be sure to check out my other videos regarding group policy, network infrastructure, and a variety of other topics. Also don't forget to check out my friends at CC Mixter and the great music that they provide for videos and productions such as these.